Hi everyone and welcome to MDC Entertainment. Today we will be showing you the production of emotion paint. Mostly emotion paint is made up of different chemical components like the, like the calcium carbonate, polyvisine acetates, nitrosol, formalin, ammonia, hexanol, hydrosol and so on and so forth. So today we will be showing you how it is made from scratch. This is actually this is actually the calcium carbonate, and calcium carbonate is the basic component of the paint. It is actually what is responsible for the coating. We have here this is silicate. Silicate is a white pigment that helps in brightening or bringing out the white component of the paint. This is carbon, and carbon is used in dissolving undiluted particles that are found in the paint. I showed you earlier the polyvisine acetate which is PVA that is the gum or the binder of the paint. Here we have our anti-fungi that is responsible for product, for eradicating fungi growth from the paint. Here we also have our deformer. The deformer helps us to dissolve undiluted particles that are formed in the paint to actually make a smooth solution. We have our ammonia, it's also a preservative to help the paint stay last or long term, last longer. Sorry, we have our formalin, it also helps the paint last longer. We also have our texture pore. Texture pore here is responsible for the shininess of the paint, it brings out the color of the paint. We also have hydrosol, hydrosol brings out the color of the paint. We have water, which is the body or the major solution, the major solvent we, we, we are using during the production. That's all. I don't start off. Okay. There are different components in making paints. We have this, this is actually titanium dioxide, the chronos one, this is silicate, this is carbon, this is antifungal, this is the deformer, this is hydrosol, this is texanol, this is formalin, and this is ammonia. This is nitrosol, and this is the polyvisine vinyl acetate, the PVA. Now, these chemicals have different. Okay. At first, you add water to an empty bottle. After adding the water, you dissolve your titanium dioxide inside the water. As you can see. You can the outside inside the water. You stir. You give your hand and bring the particles. You stir. While stirring, you are actually dissolving the particles of titanium dioxide to make a smooth solution. After stirring your titanium dioxide for five minutes. You add your carbon to help the dissolving process. Okay. 
the major work of this carbon is to help dissolve on those of the solid particles in the paint and helps make a uniform solution. So you see particles, so you use your hand. We now have a uniform solution here, so we add our silicates. Silicate is responsible for making the paint whiter. Since we are producing white, we add silicates to make it shinier. But some people don't normally like to add silicates. Depend on the quality of whites that you want to produce. We are actually producing a very good quality of white. Sugar. That's why we are adding silicates. So you stir one side here. Most of the strong particles inside the solution, so you can make a uniform pass, uniform solution. Mm -hmm. for that for later. Okay. So now we are going to dissolve. Our natural soot, which is the main thickener, is a thickening agent. We are dissolving it. We dissolve it in water. And don't forget, when you are dissolving this thing, you actually have to spare in one direction. It will be like magic. So we are dissolving our natural soot in our paint. So we are staring in one direction. Until we actually see the reaction. So now I've added night to soil. You see the time. You can just start getting ticking.
to look. So my soul is ticking again for things. As you can see, it's getting ticking. Getting it is no longer watery, so we continue to stir one side it until the particles of the nitro expands to its extreme. So you see. So we are adding now our polyvisil acetate, our PVA. As you can see, the viscosity of the paint is increasing. You can see how thick the paint is now. You can see the viscosity of the paint has increased. The paint is no longer watery. It's now turning to what you used to know as paint. You see. So we stir and we allow
to see how shiny the white is because we had a silk kit. Probably about me the same thing for my body. <laughs> So now we are actually adding mm, we're putting the paint to the thickness that we want to see the viscosity of the paint, see the thickness. It's not so what we are adding, we are we are adding the former. The work of this deformer is to help us dissolve on the little particles that we have in the paint, like to help breaks the hard molecule. This is actually a dish. Zabios. Me, me, I did not think you me like you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Huh. So we are adding our head to The so helps us to get a shiny surface. Like it, it helps the paints to be shiny. We'll also be adding text and all. Let's open this one. So we're adding our text and all. It also helps in bringing out the color of the paint. So we are staring. You can see. So now we add in formalin.
Don't forget if you're adding your ammonia of money, you don't add the same time. You add either ammonia first, you stir. Because if you add it at the same time, they would actually both produce an isothermic reaction. So for me, I'm adding my formalin first. Before I then add my ammonia after about 30 minutes. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. I say minutes. I say video. Minutes far. So I'm adding my formalin. My ammonia, sorry, rather. So since you're making acrylic paint, it is advisable to add antifungi. So the paint will actually be resistant to the growth of any type of fungi, like normal mold that grows on the wall. So since we've added our ammonia for Malina to preserve the tips, we are going to be adding our antifungi to the paint. So you see, our acrylic paint is ready for use. What about this? Hmm? This today. Yeah, the form will be that. So you see that if you look at my hand, you still see some particles of the nitro so that are undissolved. So I'm actually adding the format that actually help me speed up dissolving it of these particles. So now we have our acrylic paint. So you see, let's just keep some more. So later I would actually go and check for the coverage level of the paint. Our paint is actually ready for use. Thank you. 
Yeah, you see, the paint is ready. So next, we're making mats. Mats, but we are making our mats from our already made acrylic. I make a one this one. So we are just making small quantities of the mats. So we're dissolving. We're dissolving, cashing, carbonates. That's a little quantity. Normally, we can actually start this process from the beginning. It's just similar to what we did with the actually, but just that this one will be having small concentration of passion coming into it. So we don't have a we have a little rough surface on the base. Let me see. Because you can make it much. We add in this and No, no, there are small, there are another bucket. Because the addition of the fashion is not enough. We'll be adding more.
So we now have our mats. So the next one we'll be doing is the normal emotion. So now we need to have a mat from not to wear. So now we are making our motion paints. So that's we need enough cash in cabinets. So we'll be making our motion paints. This one is actually made up of more cash in cabinets. All like the rest of the paints. That we've been doing.
you don't want to change colors, you just add a different colors. Hmm? If you don't change colors, if you just add yeah. a color here. Yeah. But this one, this production is you know, for majorly for white. So if you put color now, it will hard before the color will enter inside. We've made our normal emotion things from acrylic. So, those are one is one of 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 so the paint I use for interior and exterior house painting, boats, automobiles, plane, appliances, furniture and other places where protection application are desired. Paint is essential commodity that does not just beautify but also serves as a protective measure on the surface it is applied. Thus, there is always a demand for it at any place in time. There are various chemicals used in paint production. The paint production cost is very low and the outcome is quite profitable. So paint production is a great business opportunity if you ask me that you should consider. Such people, some people have the wrong notation that you need a large factory or a capital to start this business. That is not true. You can start producing paints anywhere in your backyard. All you need is the capital to get your required chemicals. The packaging materials are small mixing machines that you don't want to mix if you don't want to mix manually. There are two boards or classes of paints, namely oil based paint and water based paint. Water based paint, as the name implies, is a type of paint which ca the carrier solvent is water. There are different water based paints. And there are 12 different types of water-based paints. There are chemical constituents, formula, and different procedures. We have the emulsion paints, the textured paints, the flexured paints, the satin or nylon paints. We have POP paints. We have matte or eggshell paints. We have flex coat paints. We have textured matte paints. We have marble towel paints. We have marble effect paints. We have base coat paints. We have graphics paints. Production of water-based paints. Raw materials include because paint consists of pigments, solvents, resins, and various additives. The pigments will give the color. The solvents will make it easy to apply. The resin will seem the function of it as a binding agent that helps the paints to dry. The additive serves as every other thing, from fillers to antifungi. 
Hundreds of pigments, both natural and synthetic, exist. The basic is white pigment, which is titanium dioxide or calcium carbonate, selected for an excellent concealing property. The black pigment is commonly made from carbon black. Other pigments used in making paints include iron oxide, calcium sulfide for red, metallic salts for yellow and orange and oranges, and iron blue and chromium, and chromium yellow for blue and green. Solvents are various solvents are various low viscosity volatile liquid. They include petroleum, mineral spirits, and aromatic solvents such as benzonol, alcohol, esters, ketone, and acetone. The natural resin most commonly used lime seeds, coconut oil, soya beans oil with white acids, acrylics, exposites, and polyethylene. Numbers among most popular synthetic resins. Additive serves many purposes. Some, like calcium carbonate and aluminium silicate, are simply fillers that give the paint a body and the substance changing its property. The additives produce certain desirable characteristics in paint, such as that gives the paint disappearance in its anti-skinning agent, deforming a deformers, which and a host of many other edible uh. The following are chemical constituents used in the production of paints, water-based paints. You have water, you have titanium dioxide, only used for the production of white paint. You have fillers, you have colorants, you have resins, you have preservative, you have thickness, you have hydrosol, you have marble, you have acrylic, you have disperance, you have dryers, you have K14, you have buffer, you have deformer, you have anti-skin, you have barmacock. Function of each of these chemicals. Solvents. Solvents serve as the vehicle of the main ingredient. That's the main ingredient in the paint. Solvents increase the overall volume of the paint. Solvent may be water, petrol, kerosene, toiline for oil-based paints. For water-based paints, commonly known as emulsion, water is to be mixed with all chemicals together. It must not be hot water. It's, you can use a clean water with normal water temperature. However, soft water is preferable in paint making because it helps the, to mix the paint easily. Resin. Resin. This is the binding and foaming agent. The resin used could be polyvinyl acetate, PVA, for water-based paints, or, or 773, or acid resin for oil-based paints. However, there are different types of PVA, namely acrylic resin, polyvinyl vinyl acetate, acona, and vinyl PVA used for water-based paints. PVA is very important in paint making. I guess you might have seen a situation where a paint building, when you rub your hands on the surface, the paint seems like to be fake or stain your hand. That's a result of ill usage of PVA. Either acrylic a corner PVA or vanadium PVA is used as a binder for water-based paint. It is the reason use and the quality used that determine the quality of the paint. Correct usage will prevent your paint from staining, choking or rubbing easily on painted wall or objects. A key reason is used as a binder for oil-based paint. In my experience, some big name paints manufacturing industry do not even know how to use resins correctly, or they are probably trying to cut costs and expenses of the quality of the final product. That is why most emotion paints in the market today will stain your body if you mistakenly rub your body against the painted wall or object. But don't worry, I will tell you how to use it correctly, and you know, you might become the next consultant in paint making, in paint making industry. Titanium dioxide. This is a chemical used majorly in the production of white paint. It is, however, necessary in various qualities. In the production of other colored paint, it is a whitening chemical powder form. It forms a function and makes sure that the white paint is shining and not dull. The secret of the big names in the paint industry. We shall give you a ratio down the line. 
fillers. These are components that give the body of the paint. They include calcium carbonate, commonly known in the market as calcium, and cow gun, and or cow and kaolin clay, a white powdery substance that is also used as filler in soap production to reduce cost. Let me talk about calcium carbonate a little, so you'd have an idea of what it is about. Calcium carbonate is a filling agent in paint. The market people normally call it calcium, but without addition to calcium to the name, to the carbonate to the name. This means that you can go to any shop that sells paint chemical and ask them for calcium. It is the same as calcium carbonate. This chemical is also in powder form and is packaged in bags and it is written C-A-L-C-O. That's the chemical formula, which is C-A-C-O-3 on it. Now, note that calcium carbonate is of two types. You have dolomite and calcite. Both are good, but dolomite is recommended if you're producing pure white paint. And calcite is better if you're doing off-white, dirty white paint production or any other color production. Colorant. A colorant is a coloring agent that adds color to the body of the paint. It can be in different types, colors usually called primary colors. Even other colors is obtained from a combination of primary colors. Coloring is one of the most important aspects of paint making procedures. It involves the ability to mix some colors together and get a desirable result. It is not difficult at all. If you have initiative and artistic eye, colorants can come in different colors called primary colors. They are yellow. Why what we painters call it cream. There's red, there's black, there's green, there's blue, and other colors are gotten from the combination of two or more of these. What about the white paint? You may ask. Well, you do not need to have a pure white color because of the paint. Which the paint contains calcium carbonate. And it gives us a naturally white. In fact, once you pour calcium carbonate in water, you get white paint. I hope that is clear. With a white shiny, bright, attractive surface, add titanium dioxide or you add silicate to the paint. Pigment could be colored oxide, color oxide, or colored paint, or titanium dioxide for white paint. You shall cover how. To mix colors in a particular result to get a particular result but for now just know that colors can be formed in paste or in oxide when you see colors in paste we mean that they are semi-solid or condensed liquid form like your pomades or your cream that you normally use when they are in oxide we mean that they are dust form like your face powder or a color like cream has both oxide and paste. Red and black are mostly in oxide. Green and blue are in paste form. For those of you who might be wondering which one to use between the oxide and the paste, I suggest that you want If you're producing a color like deep yellow, like MTN color, you should use paste, otherwise oxide. Combination of colors will get you any color that you like. However, the formula of the combination has a definition you can just use only one colorant to produce about three paints depending on the quality you put in general you're looking for an off-white color add more quality of yellow oxide to your paint for light for light color bash color use yellow oxide and a little red oxide ratio caution you must dilute the colors very well with water before you apply it to the paint for example, if you if you get a red oxide, pour a cup of water in the container, mix thoroughly. If your paint will not, even though your paint will have that stain when you roll it on the wall. Color combination. The knowledge of color combination cannot be overemphasized in paint production. As stated earlier, color is divided into primary, secondary, and tertiary. Primary colors are those basic colors which include red, blue, and yellow. Secondary colors are the combination of one or two primary colors to achieve a desired example. Example, blue and yellow to form green, red and yellow to form orange, purple and blue to form purple, yellow and white to form cream, blue and white to form sky blue, white and black to form gray, little red and
Note, most colors must be primary or secondary and are present in the market. Meaning, you don't need to stress yourself mixing primary or secondary colors to get desired colors. Preservatives, these are chemicals that help you to prolong the lifespan of paints. Preservatives may are mainly used for water-based paints. The chemicals are, that are used may include ammonia, formalin, anticide, sodium benzoate, and K14. Preservative increases the shelf life of the product. Permit me to talk about ammonia in particular. This is a strong, it has a strong pungent smell that smells exactly like urine. Apart from serving as a biocide, ammonia is used to make paint more durable. That is, it serves as a preserving agent. Thickness, their names implies, as the name implies, they help thicken the paint. Examples of chemicals used as thickness include nitrocell, easy gel, acritex, G14, and bamakok. Again, I will talk to you about nitrosol, acritex, and bamakok a bit. Nitrosol is a thickening agent that helps hold the paint together and preserve pigment from settling down. It is majorly used for water-based paint. Its correct usage makes the paint durable on the wall. Acritex is also a thickening agent. It holds seamlessly water paints together. Bamakok does the same function of nitrosol, which is thickening. If you use Bamakok, you do not need to use nitrosol. Buffer. Buffer makes the thickener to react faster. Biocytes. These are chemicals that kill microorganisms like algae, fungi, and do not allow grass to grow on the surface of a painted wall. Examples of biocide include ammonia and formalin. The former, these are chemicals that reduce the foaming in paints during the production process. Anti-skin. These are chemicals that serve as anti-cracking agents. Brightness. These are chemicals that help correct the dullness of paints. They help in bringing out the brightness of the paint, especially for white paints, colored paints. You don't need to use them for dark color in production. Example of brightness include hydroso for white color paint and ammonium and aluminum silicate for white color paints too. Let's talk about hydrosol a bit. As it starts as it stated above, hydrosol is one of the chemicals that integrates the color and brings out the best in them. It is used to correct dullness in paint and it is also used for both white and colored paint production. Marble dust this is the only required if you want to produce type of paint that is called test coat. A test coat paint is a paint that is that has a kind of rough surface and appears like stone or sand particles when mixed together with painted wall. There are two types of marble dust, namely the rough and the smooth one. The type you choose, whether rough or smooth, is determined by what you do to achieve. If you want sandy test coat, that is without lining, you use the rough type. However, a combination of both gives ratio of best results. Dispersants. These are chemicals that help to reduce the tendency of solid materials in paints to settle at the bottom of the mixer during the production. And even the paint has a package for sale. Without dispersants, the solid component of paint will settle at the bottom over time. Examples of such chemicals include jennifer and carbon. Apart from the function as a dispersant, jennifer also functions as a kind of fragrance that does to give the paints a good odor. Dryers. These are catalysts that speed up the drying of paints, carrying oxygen into the paints and making it dry through oxidation, polymerization and condensation. Examples of chemicals that are dryers include texanol and mixed dryers. Like I stated earlier, this is everything you need to know about the procedure of making paints. You have different type of paints. So those are things about the different chemicals used in making paints. Now, the processes involved in paint making. Step 1. For one bucket of paints, normal 20 liter paints container, pour a bucket of water to a certain amount of volume. You can increase the volume of water at any stage necessary. Add 
less than half bag of cash, you mix until the mixture rises to 17 liters in the bucket. Now, add the stir continuously. No, try producing white paint. You mix titanium dioxide in water first before adding calcium. Two teaspoons of titanium dioxide are enough. Now, coloration. It is assumed that by the time you must have diluted the colors as required the water, they are in oxides or in powdered form. Now, put the color with small amount and keep turning until you get desired result. You can actually add more if you like. Suppose you add more yellow example as you need. Then, step 3. Add the number of PVA to the mixture. After turning, add half cup of nitrosol. Stir towards one direction. Add stir towards one direction. Add the same small volume of ammonia after a while and I do so consistently. Turn very well and the final step involved when you complete the step that I have mentioned earlier. Make sure that you turn the mixture very well. As you're turning it, you might get a little thickened. It might, it might become thickened while you're turning it. For large quantity production, if you're working on about 350 liters of paint, you shall have about 16 germs of paint after this production. Now, 350 liters of paint. You first of all add the calcium, titanium dioxide, PVA, nitrosol. Now, step to actually produce text coat. Add 6 liters of water in the bucket. Add calcium and then add the colors that you're supposed to. Now, after turning the mixture above, add marble dust. There are two types of marble dust, the smooth and the rough one, depending on the type that you want to use. You will now notice that some text coat paints have kind of lining. Some have rough surfaces, and there are these that are called designer test codes, such as the ones that we use in special rollers designed for house or something like flower or box made of paint. I'm sure you must have seen this in such paint. It is called artwork in the painting industry. All these are test codes, but the model of application of marble doors makes the different types. For rough text codes, use the rough marble doors your production. For lining test goods, use combination of the rough and the smooth marble dust in equal ratio. The production of one. For artwork test goods, use only smooth marble dust in the production. Now that you are adding the marble dust, you would now notice that the volume of mixture is increasing. Add according to your own description. Uh, it is has no specific measurements. If you are confused on the quantity to add, just keep adding until the container of marble dust is 1 over 4 empty. Step 3. You t now have to toss thoroughly. To stir thoroughly as you add your PV and other chemicals like you said in the production of the emulsion paints that I list said about first. However, you need to increase the volume of the liters. For example, if you need a full glass of nitrosol and increase volume of other chemicals. The production of test coats puts scent from malin and add some volume of ammonia and hydrosol. When you have finished alongside with other chemicals, add the hydrosol, get your mouth prepare for turning the paint to you add acritex, then you're using the manual. Mix thoroughly. If you have a mixer, then it's fine. But if you don't have, you have to use your hand. Paint is any pigmented liquid, liquefiable or solid mastic composition that after application to a substrate in a thin layer converts a solid film. It is mostly commonly used to protect and provide color and texture to a building. Paint can be made in primary colors and in different colors too. Paint is typically stored and sold and as applied as liquid. Most types of paints dry to become solid. Most paints are either oil-based or water-based, which has distinct characteristics. Paint is made up of different components, which include the vehicle, the binder or the film former, the thermoplastic mechanism, the thermosetting mechanism, the combination mechanism, 
the dilute or solvent or the thinner, the pigments, dryers and fillers and the additives. Now let me explain these components as I have listed. Now the vehicle in a paint is a component that is composed of the binder and if it is necessary to the thin binder with a dilute solvent like water. This, in this case, once the paint is dried or cured, very nearly all the dilute has evolved and the binder is left on the coated surfaces. Thus, it is important qualities in coating formulation, the vehicle solids, sometimes called the resin solid of the formula. Now, the binder or the film former. The binder or the film former, film forming component of paint. It is only the component that is always present along with various types of formulations. Many binders are too thick to be applied and must be thinned. The layers, the thinner is present and varies with the binder. The binder impacts properties such as gloss, durability, flexibility, and toughness. Binders include synthetic or natural resins such as Arkeys, acrylics, vinyl acrylics, vinyl acetate, etin, polyethins, polyester, marine resin, esposy, and so on and so forth. Binder can be categorized according to the mechanism for film formation. Thermoplastic mechanism include drying, and drying refers to the simple evaporation of solvents or thinner to leave coherent film behind. Thermoplastic film, film forming. Mechanisms are sometimes described as thermoplastic cure that can be 